Well here's the bottom of the amplifier. I went ahead and installed a soft keying circuit from Harbach which unfortunately I didn't film. Um, he sends you this circuit board with all the individual components and you have to solder the components on yourself and then of course trim the wires and he sends also a little standoff over here to hold it up off of the, the board or the uh, chassis. You have to drill a hole for the screw to go through you know, in the chassis and move a few things around. You know, these wires he sends and you have to tin them and solder them and hook them into the board and then connect them to the right location. But his instructions are very detailed. He sends you a uh, four page instruction part list sheet. So here's the part list. So you check, make sure you've got all the parts on the back here before you start. And what I ended up doing is I ended up uh, installing the parts and just checking them off in the little box over here as I installed them and made sure I had the right component for each location. So it was, you know, it took maybe well, an hour or so, but it wasn't difficult. It was just, you know, the time consuming part of putting it together. So I haven't tried it out yet. I don't even want to power it up yet, but I uh, also got some uh, deoxit cleaner because I want to clean up some of these wafer switches like this one here before I power anything back up. So, so far I've uh, replaced that transmit receive relay and installed this soft keying circuit. Now the soft keying circuit I didn't explain. There's a relay on the back. Of course this is upside down but back here it says antenna relay or this is like your push to talk kind of connection. It was made for older transceivers that had a lot more robust um, keying circuit to key this amplifier. Uh, you can't connect this directly to a modern transceiver. You have to have a intermediate box that has a relay in it. This circuit eliminates that so now you can connect it to any modern transceiver uh, and it'll key it easily. So anyway, I think the next thing I'm going to do is uh, clean off these wafer switches. There's several wafer switches or switch locations. Here's one of them. and I'm going to spray this deoxid on there and try to clean it off and rotate the knob. I don't know if I can get it on the back side. There's contacts I believe on both sides here. So I'll um, put it on here and rotate the knob and brush and try to clean off any oxidation or gook that's built up over the years. And when I do this also there's there's one little contact that makes that comes in between. I'll try to brush it in there where it's between contacts so that you can actually get some mechanical action in there. And I'll do that to all the contact surfaces. I've gone ahead and put the protective shield back on after I install the tubes. I'm going to plug it in and see if that keying circuit works. I think even before I do that I will check the voltage at that the um, antenna relay plug which I've got it plugged into this cord here. First thing let's make sure we don't get any smoke out of here when I plug it in and turn it on. It's hooked on to a dummy load but I have no exciter power going into it. Let's go ahead and put these at middle setting high voltage Let's make sure. Okay, it turns on okay. We've got good voltage. Let me check the voltage at the keying circuit. In fact, yeah, I guess I can do that. It's about 1.7 volts. I'm going to try to key it externally. I'll see if I can hear the relay click. 
and it does. So everything looks like it's working properly. So the new soft keying circuit works. Didn't have anything blow out. Okay, that's it for now.